वेलकम यू इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग इट इज नाइन्थ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस सीरीज इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द जनरेशन ऑफ ए एम सिग्नल विद नॉन लीनियर डिवाइसिस प्रोडक्ट डिवाइसिस एंड स्विचिंग डिवाइसिस इन दिस लेक्चर आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस अबाउट डिटेक्शन और डिमोडुलेशन ऑफ ए एम सिग्नल द आउटलाइन ऑफ दिस लेक्चर आर detection of am signal with coherent or synchronous detection with square law detection and envelope detection and after this we will discuss about disadvantages of am signal and advantages and application of amplitude modulated signals in the objective of this lecture you will able to explain different detection process of baseband signal from amplitude modulated signal advantages disadvantages and applications of amplitude modulated signals we know the analog modulation is transfer of baseband signal xt into complex envelope xct and the analog demodulation is a transformation of received complex envelope into estimate of message of baseband signal and so the process of detection or demodulation in is the process of recovering the message signal or baseband signal from the received modulated signal so here you can see this is the amplitude modulated signal xct and envelope is the modulating signal and here demodulator or detector gives you the baseband signal Uh, this is the baseband signal or message signal there are several techniques available for demodulation of amplitude modulated signal and these are coherent synchronous detection square law detection and envelope detection so just like in this figure you have seen the am signal is applied to the input of the detector and the at the output i will receive my message or baseband signal so in these tech in these three techniques first of all uh, we will discuss the coherent or synchronous detection and out of these three the simplest and most widely used is the envelope detector so first we will discuss coherent synchronous detection if the modulated signal which is received is given by the modulated signal xct ac 1 plus mxt cos 2 pi fct or we can write it as ac cos 2 pi fct plus m ac xt cos 2 pi fct the process of detection is exactly opposite to that of modulation if the generating if generating the carrier signal uh, correct in frequency and phase at the receiver and multiplying the received signal by this locally generated carrier signal and after it low pass filtering the product of two signals so here first of all we will generate the carrier uh, with uh, having same frequency and phase as it is at the transmitter and multiplying the amplitude modulated signal with this locally generated carrier and this product is applied to the low pass filter then we will get our baseband or message signal so the circuit based on this so from equation first we know xct so we can have the amplitude modulated signal xct and we will multiply this uh, with the carrier uh, carrier wave co cos 2 pi fct so it will be ac cos square 2 pi fct plus mac xt cos square 2 pi fct and you know cos square theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 so applying this we will get ac by 2 plus ac by 2 cos 4 pi fct plus m ac by 2 xt 1 plus cos 4 pi fct so using this equation second the circuit uh, uh, based on this is given here this is the modulated signal am signal and this is multiplied by the carrier Uh, that is generated by the local oscillator at the receiver side then we will get the product xt cos 2 pi fct and after low pass filter we will get output signal yt and using the capacitor then we will get the scaled version of a baseband signal xt 
if the highest frequency component present in XT is FM, then let the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter will be FM and then the output of the low pass filter YT, it will be here AC by 2 plus MAC by 2 XT. So this is AC by 2 and MAC by 2 XT. So these are the output from the filter and the higher frequency component FC are removed by the low pass filter. So the output YT, it will be AC by 2 plus MAC by 2 XT. And this DC component is blocked by the coupling capacitor C. So that's why uh, after YT, we have used this capacitor C that will block the DC component. And the output from the capacitor, it will be MAC by 2 XT and which is a scaled version of the message signal XT. It is not easy thing to generate uh, in the receiver a carrier signal of a correct frequency which is in phase with the carrier of the received signal. Uh, we will discuss this problem later and now we will discuss the square law detection. This figure shows you the square law detection block diagram of the square law detector and here the amplitude modulated signal is applied uh, v1t is applied to the input of the square law device and here we are using low pass filter in the in the generation case you have seen that uh, after the square law device we have used the band pass filter but here we will use the low pass filter instead of band pass filter in the detection process the input output characteristic that is transfer uh, characteristic of the square law device is non-linear that is mathematically it can be expressed as v out t it will be a v1 t plus b v1 square t and v1 t is the input voltage to the detector or am signal amplitude modulator signal so we can write here v1 t is xct uh, amplitude modulated signal ac 1 plus mxt cos 2 pi fct and v to t it will be a ac 1 plus mxt cos 2 pi fct plus b ac square 1 plus mxt whole square cos square 2 pi fct since cos square theta you know 1 by 2 1 plus cos 2 theta so using this we will have v to t it is a ac 1 plus mxt cos 2 pi fct plus b ac square by 2 1 plus m square x square t plus 2 mxt into 1 plus cos 4 pi fct so out of these terms the only desirable term is b ac square by 2 into 2 mxt or you can say b ac square mxt which is due to b1 v square t term and that's why this name is uh, this the name of this detector is the square law device or square law detector uh, this desired term is extracted by using low pass filter after the diode or square law device the cutoff frequency of low pass filter is fm hertz so v out t output from the low pass filter it will be bac square mxt and here the dc component this uh, dc component b a c square by 2 it it will be uh, blocked uh, using the capacitor and in equation in this equation we can see that the we have recovered the message signal xt at the output of the detector and from this equation 8 uh, you have the unwanted signal this is unwanted signal b a c square by 2 m square x square t so this is the desired signal and this is the unwanted signal uh, and, and give rise to a signal distortion and the ratio of desired signal to the undesired signal it will be b a c square m x t by 1 by 2 b a c square m square x square t or you can say in the ratio it will be 2 by m x t we should maximize this ratio in order to minimize the distortion to achieve this we should choose mxt the mxt we should choose small as compared to unity one for all value of t 
if m is small uh, then the am signal is weak this means that the distortion in the detector output is low if and only if the applied am is weak and if the percentage modulation is very small now we will discuss about envelope detector we know that the envelope of an amplitude modulated signal follow the variations in the amplitude of the message or modulating signal if the modulating signal uh, is without distortion now the diode detector or the envelope detector tries to uh, extract the envelope of the received amplitude modulated signal and that's why it is known as envelope detector the envelope detector circuit is very simple and inexpensive as it consists of a diode and a few resistor and capacitor and this gives an output that is very good approximation of the message signal and the circuit diagram for the envelope detector you can see it consists of a diode and rc circuit rc filter and the modulated signal is applied to the diode detector and here at the output of the rc filter we will get the message signal the standard am is applied at the input for the detector in every positive half cycle of the input the detector diode is forward biased it will charge the filter capacitor c connected across the load resistance r to almost the peak value of the input voltage as soon as the capacitor charges to uh, to the peak value the diode stop conducting the capacitor will discharge through resist, uh, through resist load resistor r so here this will be uh, the circuit diagram this is when diode is on the capacitor is going to charge and in this condition the diode is uh, the diode is off and capacitor is going to discharge through r so uh, using this uh, we can approximate output of the envelope it will be the path of charging and discharging so the approximated uh, value of the envelope detector it will be like this figure and this is the baseband signal the discharging process continue until the next positive half cycle when the input signal becomes greater than the capacitor voltage the diode conducts again the process repeats itself this uh, in this figure input output waveforms for the envelope detector it shows that the charging discharging of the filter capacitor approximate approximate the output voltage here the charging and discharging will approximate the output voltage here we can see that the envelope of am wave is being uh, re recovered successfully and if uh, here we have recorded it uh, am uh, is baseband signal successfully here we have assumed that the diode is ideal which present a zero resistance when it is on and infinite resistance when it is off the capacitor charges through the diode d and source resistance rs this is the source resistance and the capacitor is charges through this diode and source resistance and discharge through load r when the diode is off so the charging time constant rsc should be short as compared to the carrier period 1 by fc so rsc the charging time constant it should be very very less than 1 by fc on the other hand discharging time constant rc should be long enough so that the capacitor discharges slowly through the load resistor r but uh, this time constant should not be long which will not allow the capacitor voltage to discharge at maximum rate of charge of the maximum rate of charge of the envelope so rc should be Uh, very very greater than 1 by fc but very very less than 1 by fm fm is the maximum modulating frequency here uh, now the distortion in the envelope detector output there are two types of distortion which can occurs in the detector output diagonal clipping and negative peak clipping the diagonal clipping 
this type of distortion occurs when the dc when the rc time constant of the load circuit is too long due to this the rc, RC circuit cannot follow the fast uh, charge in the modulating envelope and here you can see this is the actual output showing the diagonal clipping and this is without diagonal clipping so this is one kind of distortion and another distortion is the negative peak and uh, peak clipping uh, this uh, distortion occurs due to the fact that modulation index of the output side of the detector is higher than that of the input side and uh, so at the high uh, the higher depth of the modulation of the transmitted signal the over modulation may take place at the output of the detector so due to the over modulation you know when m is greater than one so uh, it will be over modulated and this negative uh, negative peak will be clipped here only way and only way to reduce or eliminate that this uh, this distortions is to uh, choose rc time constant properly and here the rc time constant uh, the maximum value of this discharge time constant for a given value of modulation index and frequency of the maximum uh, frequency of maximum frequency component in the modulating signal without cause of diagonal clipping is rc uh, so time rc time constant it should be less than equal to 1 by 2 pi fm into under root 1 minus m square by m and with this uh, time constant we will not have this type of uh, uh, diagonal clipping and uh, negative uh, and this uh, negative peak clipping so now we will discuss the disadvantages of am signal the amplitude modulated am signal which we have discussed contains a carrier along with two sidebands is termed as double sideband full carrier so uh, the am amplitude modulated signal which we have discussed here it is basically amplitude modulated, modulated signal double side band with full carrier am dsb fc and its frequency spectrum you can see this is the frequency spectrum this having the carrier frequency and upper and lower side bands the transmission of am dsb fc is inefficient because two third of the power is being wasted here in the in the carrier which is having no information and the information contained in the two side bands only but the side bands are image of each other so the, the this is the one side band and this is lower side band and these two side bands are image of each other and hence both of them contain the same information so all information can be conveyed by only one sideband so why we are using two sideband we are wasting our transmitted power in this case so the am needs a large bandwidth 2 fm in this case you can see the bandwidth is 2 fm from from the difference between upper sideband and lower sideband and out of which only one is sufficient to convey all the information one sideband so the bandwidth of double sideband is double than actually required so actually we will require only uh, this bandwidth fm bandwidth but we are uh, having 2 fm bandwidth 2 fm so this is uh, this is waste of uh, the bandwidth here and so double sideband full carrier is bandwidth in in efficient system and also the power in efficient system because power is wasted and bandwidth is also wasted in this case and am uh, signal gets affected due to noise also when the am wave travels from uh, the transmitter to the receiver over a communication channel the noise can change the amplitude of the envelope of a amplitude modulated in a random manner so the performance of am is very poor in presence of noise because uh, the noise is uh, uh, added to the amplitude of the uh, envelope of the am signal so the envelope can be like this so there is a random change in the amplitude of the am due to noise and uh, this effect of noise in am wave uh, clearly reduce the performance of the uh, of the of your system now advantages of am system there are many advantages of am system am transmitter are less complex 
AM receiver are simple, detection is easy. AM receiver are cost efficient, so a common man can afford to buy it. AM signals can travel a long distance and AM signals have, have low bandwidth compared to other modulation techniques. And the applications of AM signals are radio broadcasting, picture transmission in TV system. These are some applications of the AM amplitude modulated signal. So this is the end of uh, this lecture. Here we have discussed about different detection process of AM signal by which we can recover our baseband signal. Also we have discussed advantages, disadvantages and applications of the amplitude modulatory signal. And this was ninth lecture of the lecture series of basics of communication engineering. In the next lecture we will discuss about double sideband suppressed carrier amplitude modulation system where we have suppressed the carrier because carrier is not having any information and one third power of the your AM signal is wasted in transmitting the carrier and so we will discuss about this double sideband suppressed carrier amplitude modulation modulation system in the next lecture till then thanks for listening this lecture thank you